Are you prepared for the unexpected life events? This is the RV Life Podcast. I'm Dan Hunt with my incredible wife, Patty Hunt. And today we're going to take a page from our friends Todd and Sheila over at Switch It Up and switch up our format and do a solo show. So guess what? Patty and I are our own guest today. We are full-time RVers for the last two years. And in addition to having this podcast, we also have a YouTube channel. And I'm certainly excited to be back on the show because I've been gone for a little while. Well, you know, today, Patty, you are in Virginia and because you're in Virginia, that is probably the impetus for this show. Are you prepared for the unexpected? Yes, because you are with the RV in Florida. And so I needed to travel for the unexpected. So I've been here in Virginia for about two and a half weeks. And that's what made us decide to do this show today. So today we are really going to break down everything that you need to kind of think about with the unexpected and how you're going to take care of it, because it's not like we just live in a sticks and bricks house. We live in an RV and there's a lot of steps we have to take when one or both of us has to be somewhere else. That yeah. sound means it's time for today's fun fact. And Patty, you have our fun fact today. So why don't we bring that in? Yes. The fun fact is, does anyone know how many births and deaths there are in the U.S. each year? You know, you and I did a little bit of research on this uh, earlier today. And the numbers were quite shocking to us, not how many there are, but the fact that those two numbers are almost identical. So in the United States last year and the year before that, it was only about a half a percent change, 3.6 million births. Now, deaths last year, and again, the percent of change is not really that much difference, 3.5 million deaths. So about 3.6 million people came into the world and 3.5 million people left us this last year. And talking about births and deaths, there's certainly, these are certainly the unexpected situations that happen that may cause you to do some last minute planning. So births, Dan and I have nine grandkids, so we certainly know a lot about that. And often they are not predictable or planned unless, of course, they're scheduled for C-section. And as all of us know, deaths are usually not something that we can plan for. So we decided to talk everything, kind of having a plan for the unexpected. You, you know, illness and or something that happens in the family, uh, it happens. And sometimes you just need to get up and go. And it really made us think about, are we prepared? And I got to tell you, I'm not sure that we were really that prepared, but that's what we're going to talk about in today's show. And we're going to do that right after the break. Protecting your RV investment means being ready for anything. An extended RV warranty from Wholesale Warranties is the best way to make sure that if an RV failure happens, you can afford to get back to enjoying the RV life as soon as possible. RV warranties are available for motorhomes, fifth wheels, and travel trailers, new and used, across the U.S. Visit WholesaleWarranties.com for a free personalized RV warranty quote today. And hit the road with peace of mind tomorrow. Why end your camping season when it gets cold? With the inflatable RV skirting system from Air Skirts, you can extend your camping season year-round. Reach out to Jim and his team by visiting airskirts.com for more information. RV Life Podcast listeners get $100 off a kit order when you use code RVPOD. That is RVPOD for $100 off. was a high school science teacher. I'm talking about my wife. He worked in the entertainment industry his entire life. That would be me. They decided to sell everything, buy an RV and see the country. And that's exactly what they did. And they haven't looked back, not just once. 
until now. Dan, of course, is talking about us, and we are talking today about the unexpected. You know, those life events which you haven't necessarily prepared for, but when you're living on the road, we found out sort of the hard way that you kind of have to be prepared for the unexpected. Well, you know, being prepared for the unexpected is something that, okay, I'll just say it honestly, we weren't. (laughs) No, we weren't. So let's go back and give a little bit about our story for those who don't know much about us. As Dan said, we started in our full-time RV life over two years ago. And one of my concerns and Dan's concerns was, you know, thinking about would we be able to get to see family? We have five kids. We have nine grandkids. They're scattered all over the country. You know, traveling in an RV, would we get to see them? And I think we've done a pretty good job with that. You you know, I I think we really have done a good job. As a matter of fact, since we started RVing, And I'm going to compare it to maybe the three years before that, because you can't really say the two years because it was right in that COVID time. But say the three years before that, we saw a few of the grandkids, but we didn't see all of them in that three year period. But in that first year that we started RVing, we were able to go and see all nine of our grandkids and not just stop by for the day. I'm talking about some real good quality time and going out and doing things and that kind of stuff. Right. It's really different when we could go take the RV and go hang out for a week or two or a month or whatever it is. But and and that's been great. But today, let's talk about the unexpected, um, you know, the last minute stuff. And I think it's so much more difficult to navigate the unexpected when you live, especially when like us living full time in an RV. Um, Can we start by talking about the stress and the emotion that goes around trying to navigate an unexpected event while you live in an RV? You you know, as we talk about some of these unexpected events, let's just break down some of the events that kind of happen. And, you know, on our list here, we have birth is the first one, but that's only kind of a a half unexpected event because you basically know when a baby's coming. You may not know the exact day, but you kind of know when a baby's coming. A graduation. (laughs) Well, you you, you, you know the day of the graduation, Uh, but an illness and death, uh, that that's a that's a whole different thing. And, and we've had that on both sides where I got sick and then we've had your mom get sick. So you had to go take care of your mom. And when I got sick, they just kicked you out of the hospital. So you had to come sit in the RV all by yourself. Right. And and you've got to be able to plan for those. But just to give everybody the story, um, my mom has been ill for on and off for about a year in January. She was rushed to the hospital. So I got a call that she was rushed to the hospital. And that's the first most unexpected event we've had on the road in the last two plus years. And that's kind of what started this whole idea of this podcast topic. You know, we have to decide how we do a lot of the navigating. What do we do? Um, And that's what we're going to go through. But let's first talk about when you get a call like that, the emotion behind it. As anybody can imagine that's ever had somebody they love get ill and have an emergency, it's a lot of emotion. And then we add in the stress of where will the RV be? How do I get out? You know, those kinds of things. And I'm going to say communication has been a big thing that I think has helped us get through this. So, you know, let's talk about communication. I mean, that day I got that call and we were sitting in an event, actually. Um, It it was a tough day, wouldn't you say? A a very tough day because um, so many things go through your mind at that minute. And a lot of decisions need to be made very, very quickly. When you get in that situation where a child or your mom or or somebody within your family, all of a sudden in that one minute is in the hospital and your first thought is, well, I need to be there. But 
in this case, your mom was in Philadelphia at the time and we were in the middle of Florida. Florida. There wasn't an airport within a hundred miles of us. So we really needed to, and I think it's something that maybe through the work that we've done over the years, but to, to stop and, and just slow everything down and then talk about what our options are. And I think that's what's right. really, really important in the communication piece is, is sl- <laughs> slow down. You, you don't yeah. need to make a decision in that one tenth of a second. What you need to do is take a breath and really, really stop and then start communicating. I think for a lot of people probably listening and even in my mind years ago, if you had said that to me in a situation like that, I would have, you know, wanted to punch you. But I, I, it is the very thing that's needed. It's just to take a breath. I mean, here I was, my mother was in serious condition, did not know if she was even going to survive. All I could think is I wanted to make it home. I'm trying to talk to all my kids and kind of let them know what was going on. And, you know, as anybody who's ever gone through anything like this, it's very emotional. But I do have to say, you were able to help me slow down and take a breath because the very thing you don't want to do is like rush into action. You don't want to panic. Um, but I, it, it was very helpful to me to have you be that calm, that, that steady person in that moment. And I think, you know, that's just something that, again, if people are prepared for and aware of, it's very helpful. The stress of those kind of things, it just, it just, it makes everything seem bigger than it is. And there's two kinds of emergencies. There's a family in a car and the car started on fire. That's an emergency that you, you need to react right away. You need to jump and react. Your mom going in the hospital or, or anybody's loved one. And we're just using our situation to kind of describe what these situations are. But your mom going in the hospital, uh, there, there's nothing that you have to do that second. You do have to do something maybe in that hour or in that day, but you don't have to do anything in that second. And and through life, everything that, that I have taught and everything that I've been taught, it says to, to deal with those kinds of situations, you need to slow down. You need to stop right. and, and look at it. Right. And I'm just going to take your example of a car on fire. Like I was, you know, trained emergency training back when I was in college. The first thing they say to do is stop and take a breath. Right. You're not trained as a former volunteer fireman to run, just run in to the car and pull somebody out. You've got to assess the situation. Assess the situation. situation. So, again, having, you know, we're going to get to the next question for everybody. Do you have a plan? And I think that's part of the plan. Take a breath, assess the situation. Um, Because we certainly didn't have a plan and we learned a lot. And that's what we want to share with everybody today. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what we learned, some the hard way um, that could be helpful to other people. Well, you, you know, when we were in sticks and bricks life, um, it it was a, a, a kind of a different situation because all you have to do is close the front door, make sure it's locked and you're off on the road. But when you live in an RV, you have an RV and most likely you have a car that you're towing behind that RV and you can't just leave it in the campground. You, you, you know, we could talk about that right now if you want, Patty, uh, you know, we, we've talked to a lot of campgrounds and a lot of campground owners and managers. Um, and one of the, you know, like a, a normal person would think, well, just it's in a campground. It's not hurting anything. Just leave it there and go. Right. You're saying a situation if we both had to go, um, right. what do we do? And so what we found is now the and I are thousand trails members, which means we go into a thousand trails uh, parks. We also can go into Encore parks. That's part of thousand trails. And I will say that for the most part, thousand trails, you are not allowed to leave your RV, even in an emergency. Sometimes in an Encore park, you are. Um, and we've had situations where we, they said, sure, your, your RV can stay here as long as you have your reservation. Um, but it really depends 
places we've been to across the country, and I can't even count how many campgrounds and places we've stayed. It really depends on each individual place, whether you can just leave your RV. Yeah, it it really, I think, depends on the time of year and the part of the country that you're in. Um, You know, I'm I'm finding that as we're here in the, uh, the, the Southeast, um, it's a little bit different than the Northeast and way different than the West. So uh, depending upon where you are, every RV pork has its own set of rules, thousand trails as a system. You're not allowed to do it. You, you just can't leave your vehicle unattended. Encore parks, which is a, a, a secondary division, they're run differently. So those are kind of a park to park basis and private parks and national parks and those kind of things. I, I, I think you just have to work with the manager and figure out exactly what it is. For the most part, I'm going to say you can't really leave your RV in an RV park. So you got to find storage now. Well, before, before go- we go on to that storage, I just want to, we had um, just bring up um, status crows, our friends from status crows. They, whatever park they were in, they were able to leave it. So they were in a similar situation where something happened. They said they had friends in the park. They spoke with the management and the management told them that it was okay to leave their RV. So I guess the point here is check with the management. But now let's talk about RV storage if you can't leave it in a park. You know, you mentioned the status crows and just uh, being the self promoter that I am. I'm going to say that we did a great, great, I mean, really a great interview with them. We had a great time talking to them. Can't wait to get together with them again. Um, and and if you look through the, the older episodes of uh, the RV Life podcast, you will find the status crows. And I, I got to tell you, that it, it was a holiday show and they actually sang a song for us. It, it, it was just incredible. Now, storage. Right. They're incredible people. And, and I'm going to say Chuck and Michelle. Um, yes. uh, their name left me for a minute, but yes, they are incredible. I agree with you. So storage, um, there are a lot of different storage solutions. And I actually found a really great article. I'm going to put it in the show notes because I think it's a great, there are some great options where you and I have been thinking, what do we do with storing the RV? When the time comes, my mother is coming you know, to her end. And at some point we're going to need to, you know, be somewhere for a funeral. I mean, point blank. And so where will we store the RV if we need to? I found the article. It's an RV Life article um, that's a storage hack. And again, I'll put it in the show notes that gives you some great options that I hadn't thought about. So the, 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 the and, and that is a great article. I read through that and it is really, really a good article. Um, a lot of RV parks have storage lots um, and we've actually utilized them from time to time for planned events. For instance, for Christmas time, we put the RV in storage and we knew we were going to go from the 15th to the third or whatever. And, and it was in storage for that time. And we prearranged it way in advance. When I was in Orlando by myself, cause Patty had uh, jumped on an airplane and gone back up to the Northeast. I went to the Orlando uh, park that we were in and they said, Oh yeah, we have storage. No problem. There's a three month minimum. I'm like, Oh, well, no, that, 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 that's not going to work. I'm not going to be away from my home for three months. So, so I went and started calling the places in the area and they were either full or they were uh, 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 at least a three to six month. One of them was a six month commitment. It's a bigger obstacle than I thought. I thought it would be easy. But I, I think that if you're in a situation, you kind of need to know where you are and know what's around you and be patient, make a bunch of calls because you'll find it, but it it might not be the first one that you find. Exactly. And, the, and that's the thing. You will find it. You'll get discouraged. Um, there are a lot of options. There are people that, you know, uh, that are part of Boondockers Welcome or Harvest Host, which Dan and I utilize. They don't often allow for RV storage, but some of them do. So be open. When we were in Las Vegas and thought we had to fly out for an emergency, I actually found somebody I was connected to on Facebook, of all things, 
she has a farm and she said, sure, come park your RV here. And I mean, so there are people and places out there that uh, you can think about. But again, it's having something of a plan without driving yourself crazy. You know, and all parts of plans come with money and planes and trains and automobiles and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to talk about all of that right after this. When traveling in your RV, how do you navigate? Do you use a paper map, a GPS, or do you use Google Maps? Our sponsor, RV Trip Wizard, has the solution, and it just works. It just works. I think I have to uh, um, copyright that because it just works. It works. I do not move this RV one inch with out talking with RV Trip Wizard. And it's funny because this morning, the people that were right across from me and they were about to leave, RV Trip Wizard did a couple of updates to their phone app and it didn't work the same way today as it did when they got here two weeks ago. And she came over to me and said, you know, Dan, I, I, I don't know, this isn't working right. What's going on here? And you know what? I got Patty on the phone. And then we got Patrick on the phone and we figured it out and she's happy and they're on their way to Orlando. So I I cannot say enough about RV Trip Wizard. Right. And I will say, since you don't have Dan or my or Patrick's phone number, if you call the help desk, they are incredible. They will walk you through anything that you're not sure of, an issue that you're having. These people really care about the customer experience, and they will walk you through any kind of situation. So have that phone number. Don't be afraid to call them if something doesn't look or seem right. Absolutely reach out to them. Uh, I just just had to bring in, you know, you, you, you talk about customer service. We actually had the opportunity of working not one, but two shows with customer service reps and actually the head of the whole customer service department. We worked with Janet and then in Hershey, we worked with Bob and you know, these are really great people that understand the, they're, they're not just people that they hire the people in customer service. They have RVs, they use RV trip wizard. So they know the problems that you may or may not have. And I, I, I gotta tell you, I, I, I have, I'm not sure I've ever been more um, fulfilled by a company than than the way that these people operate and and this product. It, it's just absolutely amazing. Just one more thing to add. <laughs> well, just one more thing that I want to add on the point of the unexpected. So you and I were in, I don't know where, above 200 miles above Tampa. We had our trip planned. I had to go into trip wizard to change our trip so I could do that, you know, so that I could fly out of Tampa when my mother was in the hospital. It took a minute for me to change that plan, get our route set. And it's things like that, that you don't want to have to mess with in those emergency situations. So I agree. We, we love them. So I flew out on a plane, sometimes a train (laughs) or an automobile is an option. Let's get into that. Most people would fly someplace unless it's close by. But if it if, if it's half a country away or whatever, um, you're going to take an airplane. But you, you need to be by you, you can't go to the local airport and, and just say, oh, I want to get on a plane and go up to Philadelphia. You, you have to get to a major regional airport. And once you get to that major regional airport, Last minute tickets are kind of expensive. One of the things that we really wanted to point out is when you're expecting the unexpected, maybe you have a credit card that can handle those airplane tickets stuffed aside that you don't use for um, everything else. But, you know, the, the, the sad case of it is most of the people that we come across, or I shouldn't say most, a lot of the people that we come across as we travel around are on a shoestring budget. Yeah. I mean, I know there have been times, all honesty, that you and I have been in that type of situation where it's like, I don't know how we're going to fly out. Now, as we're in an RV, we budget things and we also 
had money set aside for the unexpected mechanical issue, the tires that we needed. We have also added in to, you know, the the savings, I guess I would call it, is having that little bit of cushion money for an unexpected trip that you have to take, you know, like for these types of situations. So I don't think we gave it much thought before, like what if we had to fly out somewhere? Uh, but yeah, that's certainly something that we have added to the, you know, the the funds, the unexpected events funds to make sure that, you know, look, when you're in that situation, us being in that situation, I don't want to have to sit and think, wow, I can't fly out of here and be with my mom because of the money. I don't want that to be part of the already stressful situation. So, right. you know, thankfully we you know, we had the money or like you said, that's a great idea. The credit card that could handle it. Right. Just have that kind of on the side there. there people are tight everywhere. People are tight. Um, and, and I just want to bring up something that I think that people really, cause you and I, and, and I'm going to use our story a little bit. It might be a little different than other people's, but you know, some of the, the, the hurdles that we ran across when, when Patty and I were both going to move back to a place. It, you, you, you realize that, well, wait a minute, we have a tow car and the storage facility can take the tow car, but they're going to charge you extra for it. Sometimes double because you have, you know, you're taking another spot of theirs and then you have the Uber. And I, I don't know, what was it? One o'clock now our plane was really, really late for one reason or another. There was a big storm or something. And we didn't get back into Jacksonville that time until two or three in the morning. And what did we wait for about 45 minutes or an hour to get an Uber to get back? So you want to take all of those things into account. And, and, and then this week I was talking to a gentleman who is actually by himself here in this park because his wife was ill. So she went to stay with their daughter up in the Northeast. Well, guess what? He can't just leave the RV. So here he is with the RV and the car and all of that kind of stuff. When he went up to visit, he didn't even realize about, he didn't think about putting the car in storage or doing something with it. When he had to go up for the weekend, he ended up just parking the car for two weeks at the airport and it cost him over $300. So right. when we talk about planning, it's like we're, we're talking about, you have to kind of think this whole situation through as, as you're, you're doing that. And it doesn't matter if you're taking a plane or a train or you're just driving a car up. It, you're, you, you have to, you have to think about everything. And, and I'll tell you what, until we were in the situation, we hadn't thought about everything. And I wish we had at least sat down and have a conversation about it because it would have made it a little bit easier for us. And when you're already in a stressful situation, how, how, how nice is it to just pull out a checklist and say, well, that one doesn't apply that one. Doesn't. Okay. We'll do this, this, and this. I don't know. It just seems like a, a, a better way to go about it. Right. So I guess bottom line of what we're saying is plan as much as you can. I will also caution on the other side of it. Don't over plan. Don't overthink it. Don't over stress. I don't think people would, you know, want to travel or do anything if they had to overstress about it. But again, we're saying make a checklist, have a plan. I believe that the biggest, best thing that happened with Dan and I was the open communication. So the one thing that happened when I came back to Philadelphia, when my mother went in the hospital, it ended up being three weeks I was here. So now I'm feeling like, oh my goodness, how are you handling it? Are you okay? But I need to be here with my mom. So that open communication is big when you're planning and when you're in the situation. Silly things that, you know, we didn't think about. So what if you get somewhere and then you find out you need to go to a funeral? Like, what do you do about clothes? Man, that's a stressful one. Oh man, that is... Um, I can't even imagine going someplace and then having to go to a funeral and going to buy a suit. Uh, right. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. 
And that's the reality of the situation we're in, you know, and, and sometimes again, you find out somebody passed and now you're traveling from your RV, whether it's on an airplane to there. So it, it's actually something while I was packing, I thought about and um, not to sound like cavalier about it. It's been something that's been very emotional and difficult, but you know, I kind of had a little bit of a plan in my head, either I'm going to go run out and buy something I'm not going to worry about it being the fancy suit or fancy dress or, you know, Dan will be coming up. So he'll have it. So I quickly kind of had a thought in my head of how I would get that handled. And again, that's kind of the thing that when you're in the moment, you start thinking about all these things. If you take a little bit of time before you get into that moment, it's really the best way. It it, it really, really is. And, you know, Patty, I want to, just talk real quick. It, it it really doesn't matter what kind of an RV, even if you're a weekend RV or one of these situations can happen and you still have to have a plan as to what you're going to do. Even if you're just a weekender, if you're like a part timer where uh, the, the couple that I was talking to last night, they're out for six months and then they go home for six months. Well, in this six months that they're out, if something happens, if they have to go somewhere, all of these things that we're talking about right now, uh, they really apply. And then when you yeah. talk about the full timer, there's another level out there because I'm going to tell you that, I don't know, 70% of the full timers that we know out on the road are still working one way or another. So they have to figure out how they're going to continue their business. If they're going to pick up and go to, in our case, Philadelphia or Virginia, for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks. Um, so, so that's something that we need to talk about as well. Right. So for, again, you know, just giving you our story, um, you know, Dan and I have this podcast. Um, we have our YouTube channel. We are bloggers. We are speakers. As a matter of fact, the day I flew out the first time, Dan was at the Tampa RV show and there he was having to do the podcast and do the seminars and manage everything by himself. So, you know, it, it, it adds a little bit of a lot of bit of stress. And I think with that communication, how will you handle it with each other and how will you handle your business when you're not there? The one thing I really want to say and I want to emphasize here. Dan and I work with a number of different companies, RV Life sponsors, the, the podcast, um, but we work with a lot of companies, RV Life being one of them, National Indoor, RV Centers, um, Kraken, Adventure Bikes. And the reason I'm mentioning these places is because we chose to work with them because of the amazing people they are. So I never had to worry about you know, are we fulfilling what we promised them? They were all just been, they have been, and will continue to be very supportive. So Dan and I family is the most important thing. So working with companies that are like part of the family really has made a difference for us. And I just want to put that out there. It, it really has. And, uh, you know, to be even more specific, uh, Patty and I have decided that we're going to, she's going to stay up there with her mom for right now, instead of trying to come back and then work our way back up. And I'm going to work my way up that way over the next month or so. I don't want to get up into the Northeast too early, but we did have to cancel well, this week. Actually today we're supposed to be uh, at the FMC CA event and we're supposed to be doing a podcast there and we're supposed to be speaking there. Um, but, but national indoor recreational vehicle centers, they, they were so supportive um, Brett, who is the owner, is, I, I mean, he's just an incredible human being, as well as all of his employees. But he said to us that when we're up in Virginia, when I finally do make it up to Virginia, they have a facility there. And and he, he just picked up the phone and said, make Hassa your Casa. It, it's like. I might have said that wrong, but um, yeah, Spanish. <laughs> I, it didn't sound right when it came out, and I used to speak Spanish. But the bottom line is, we have a place to park Explorer One, and and it's right within you know two or three miles from where Patty's brother lives. It's it's just 
so supportive. Um, and 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 whoever your community is, and that's something I just want to kind of throw out to the RV community. Um, you know, building an RV life podcast community and building an RV life community is is really incredible because the people are so nice and and they will come over and help you. I mean, here I am with a 40 foot RV and a Jeep behind it. And I'm out there and I'm struggling and to get it off by myself. And there was a car behind honking and y'all know how that is. You're trying to do something quickly and then it just makes it longer. And, and, you know, the gentleman came over and said, well, Hey, would you, would you like some help? And he pulled the car. Oh, you know, he got in the car and pulled it over a little bit for me. And, you know, just that little teensy bit when you're by yourself really makes a difference. And that's why an RV community whether it be the RV life podcast community or the national indoor community with the AIM people, the, the, the RV people as a whole are just incredible people. I mean, I mean, don't you think Patty? I, I absolutely agree. The one thing I have to say is I think you're spending, have spent a little too much time in Florida. You said y'all. Yeah, <laughs> so y'all. I just, I just wanted to point that out. Um, but yes, I, that is part of, when you're an RV or whether it's weekends, three months, six months, full time, it doesn't matter. Community is what it's all about. When Dan was ill and I was in Las Vegas at a campground by myself, he was in the hospital for over two weeks, having that community, sometimes just picking up the phone and being able to call somebody and say, how did you handle this? Do you have any suggestions what to do with the RV? Community is part of your plan without a doubt. And it is nice for me to be here taking care of my mom and taking care of my family and know that you have people out there that'll help you. You know, at, I got to give a shout out to Clay. Uh, I'm going to say his name wrong. And Melody, um, Kurt. Kurt Melody, I'm sorry. Yeah. They are, and I'll put their name of their YouTube channel in the show notes. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, they came out when you were in Tampa and they helped you with the podcast. I mean, it made me feel so much better. I know, you know, Dan could handle it all. I know you had it, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of setup and they were there and they were so so helpful uh, as, as well as other people. I could probably mention a lot of people that have been supportive and helpful. That is important when you are traveling, especially when you have unexpected events come up. Yeah, it, it, it really, it, it really makes a difference. I, I mean, they, they were such a help to me. I, I'm not sure I could have got it all done uh, when, when we did that. And, you, you know, it, the people in the community, we're all busy and we all have things going on and we all have our lives going on, but there we are in a difficult situation and most of the people around us were, 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 were saying to us, what can we do to help? How can I help you? What can I do? Those are the kind of people that you want in your life. I mean, that's yes, what it's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not just us. I mean, we're not anything special. There are some people that I know go out there and they find it hard to get connected to community. There are ways to connect with community. Um, You could start by being on social media, Facebook groups, Instagram groups. I've met so many people that I met online first, be part of communities. RV Life has a community, RV2, right? Uh, IRV2. IRV2, yeah. It's a forum. IRV2, it's a forum where you can find out information. People get together, switch it up. They have a community of people. Dan and I are looking to create community. One of the things we're hoping to do is have get togethers through the summer. Um, it, it, that's important. So if you're struggling with it, I'm going to say reach out to me on social media, RV Life podcast, Instagram, or Facebook, and say, hey, I'm having trouble creating a community, being part of the community. Let, I'm, I'm happy to help. So feel free to reach out to me in a private message. And and that is just so important in the RV life. Um, and, and, 
everything that we've talked about today is so important for people to just plan and understand that it's okay to just say, honey, I don't know what to do and talk about it. That communication is so important in stressful, stressful times like that. So, so we hope that with this piece of this show that we're really, really able to really put it out there of some things that are not easy to talk about, you know, you know death and illness. So birth is always a lot of fun, but, but death and illness and all those kind of things, it's, those are the kind of things that, um, that we uh, really just, you, you know, it, it, it's just so important to get through those times. Absolutely. Um, we just hope by sharing our story, it helps the people out there. Um, it, it's been, you know, probably three months of a, a, a struggle and up and down. There's been some crying. There's been a lot of crying. Let's just get real. Um, and, you know, having our RV community kind of coming up with a plan as we've gone, having open communication, all of that has just really, really made a difference. And we hope, you know, it, it helps people listening. Well, you, you, you know, and one of the things that we do want to say as part of the RV Life community and the RV Life podcast community is you can reach us at our social media, which is our Facebook page, our Instagram page. There's a Twitter page out there. Any questions, you know, Patty reads, I'm not going to say I do. I'm going to say Patty reads and responds to every single question that comes out there. And if you want to be a part of the RV Life podcast, well, guess what? You can be a part of the RV Life podcast. If you have a question about RVing, if you send it to Patty or if we can get you on a telephone call, we'll put you on tape and we will put your question in the RV Life podcast. As a matter of fact, we have our question of the week coming up uh, after the break. And we also have a tip for RV Life Trip Wizard from Patrick Buchanan coming up right after this break. The most important part of your RV is the roof. If your roof leaks, your trip and your RV get ruined. You can take it to a dealership or service center to be maintained at their expensive rates. Or you can maintain it yourself over a weekend for a fraction of the cost. Liquid Rubber RV roof products will keep you dry and leak free. Visit shopliquidrubber.com slash RVLife. Use coupon code RVLifePod15OFF to save 15%. That's shopliquidrubber.com slash RVLife. National Indoor RV Centers with over 1,000 motorhomes available across multiple locations. National Indoor RV Centers continues to provide an outstanding hassle-free motorhome ownership experience. National Indoor is the number one Newmar dealer in the nation and also features brands like Integra, Winnebago, and much more. Visit nirvc.com and become a part of the National Indoor RV Center's family. This is the RV Life Podcast. I'm Dan Hunt with my incredible wife, Patty Hunt. We are not together right now. She's up there in Virginia where it's really, really cold. And I'm down here in beautiful, sunny Florida where it's really, really warm. But, you know, Patty, let's talk real quick about National Indoor RV Centers. That last commercial, uh, we love those guys. We do. And again, as you heard in the podcast, we talk about companies that truly are like family. Brett is the owner. He is an amazing man. We have been to the Manassas store where Matt is the manager and Marshall is one of this. He's an everything kind of guy. So if you have questions about RVs, you're looking for one, you want to go see Marshall. Um, this company is just a company. I am proud to say that, you know, we are part of, we are connected with and, if you have a motor home, they have talk about community and clubs. They have the AIM community, which is a club that goes on 46 different events a year. And they just do so much. It's such an incredible uh, 
company. Uh, it's a it's a membership to be part of. So we can't say enough about them. You, you know, it, it really is. And, and the rallies that they put on, uh, we've actually been to a couple of them. I got to tell you something. Those rallies rock. <laughs> I mean, they have entertainment. Uh, that acapella group that we saw in Florida right before uh, Tampa was, it was absolutely incredible. I just loved it. Uh, so we, we, yes. we, you know, we, we just love these people. If, if you are on the fence about thinking about joining a group that does rallies and has events around the country, um, you, you really want to think about AIM because I got to tell you, they, they just really really do it right. And, 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 you know, Patty, I, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to totally wholeheartedly agree with you. Okay. So uh, a little, a little get clunky when, you know, we're in two separate locations <laughs> trying to work over the computer, but we'll, we'll get through it as best we can. You know, today's show uh, ha having a plan, um, you, you know, we, we, we have these things where we, we, we have our travel plans and we, we've kind of changed it to a current thought <laughs> because we keep moving around. Uh, but, but I still think, you know, the big thing that I would like people to take away from today is communication. It, it's so important to be able to talk. It's so important to be able uh, to, to figure out these difficult times when you're in those difficult times together. Yes. Communication is number one. People talk about it all. People talk about communicating all the time, but sitting down and doing it and staying in the moment and being honest and, you know, real with what you think and how you feel. And then you could set up a plan. And then when something happens to know that you've got my back and, you know, that's just been the biggest thing that has helped me through this very, very difficult time is you know, knowing that you're handling it, you've got my back. And I, I if nothing else, have that in your plan. Yeah, it, it, it's just so important. Oh, you know what that is? That's the horn that tells us it is time for Patrick Buchanan to come in and talking about plans. How, what, what, how what kind of timing is that? Talking about plans. He's going to give us his RB Life Pro Tip of the Week. We're back this week with another Did You Know for our RV Life Pro Tip of the Week. Did you know that in RV Life Trip Wizard, you can check fuel prices? When on the Trip Wizard map, simply zoom in to the area you are looking to fuel up, right click on the map, and choose Check Fuel Prices. You'll be taken to a new page that has both a map and a list of local fuel stations with their brand, prices, address, and more. The list is filterable by fuel type, fuel grade, and search radius. You can add that fuel station to your trip by copying the address, dropping it into the search bar on your trip wizard map, and adding it as a custom stop. You can even download that fuel station list to an Excel spreadsheet. For RV Life, I'm Pat Buchanan with your pro tip of the week. Okay, wait a minute. I got to start here. That is a great. I got to oh, start. No, no, my, my again, turn. I got to start here. The difficulty of being separate. Yes. Yep. I didn't know that <laughs> I could get prices I off didn't. of there. Well, you know, I mean, we speak on this subject and we, and, and they are doing a lot of things. I was actually working with a, a some, a couple a little while ago uh, with, you know, looking at trip wizard and, how the updates have kind of changed the way things look a little bit, but I did not know you could get fuel prices there. Right. And that's great. And I just want to add in here because we love it. The TSD card, the open roads also can save you money at those gas stations. So I love that RV trip wizard now has that where you could search for them. But FYI, if you haven't checked out open roads, we're not affiliates. Open roads is definitely something you want to look at for discounts on uh, diesel fuel only. So. We're, we're, we are not affiliates right now, but we're trying to get them to advertise on the show. So if you call open roads and you mention the RV life podcast, that would really, <laughs> really, really help us out uh, because you, you know, we, we really want to do that kind of stuff with them. Um, and, and they are a great company and, and we use them mm -hmm. all of the time. So um, yes, the last. let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the difficulties of just being apart and not necessarily the situation, but 
here we are. Uh, we've been apart now for three weeks and you were back for a week and then you had to go back again. And it looks like it's going to be a l- little over two months that we'll be apart this time. Give me some of the secrets that you think is making it work for us. Well, I don't want to act like it's not really difficult. It is. Um, Again, I'm going to say the RV community people have really helped me. Melody said to me, I said, yeah, I'm really struggling when you were doing the Tampa show. I said, I'm really struggling with being here when I felt like I should be there. And she said, Family is most important. That's what you need to be doing. You're in the right place. And just those simple words were was a, a big help to me. A big thing that I also think that helps us is, you know, we live in the moment. We live life fully. So knowing that right now this is where I need to be and letting go of you know, the other stuff that just me worrying about stuff and, and us communicating and saying, you know, I feel bad that I'm not there to help that I'm not there to attach the car. I think those are things that have really made a difference for me. It's not to say it's easy, but it's not as difficult a situation. Okay. Let's be honest. You're really not upset that you don't have to be here to attach the car. (laughs) No, I'm really, I'm really not. I just would like to be more helpful. Um, but yes, I, I just, I think that this is the big thing. And I think you and I have been through so much in the 15 plus years we've been together that we've kind of learned this where I think with a lot of people, it just continues to drag them down. Maybe that's a whole nother conversation we could have in another time, you know, communicating and things like that. But I just, you know, we, Dan and I are all about make sure you enjoy the journey. So even though I'm here in a difficult situation, we've got to be in the moment and find the joy wherever we can. I'm so incredibly grateful to be here with my mom and be able to spend this time with her because we don't know how long any of us have. Um, so we definitely, you know, tell our listeners, enjoy the journey. And, and you know, one of the things that I just want to bring up in this little segment that we're doing right now is uh, we've been at this podcast for a little over three months now, and we have interviewed just some incredible people, some people that have changed our outlook to really get to know people, not the outside of the banana, but to really peel the skin back and really get into the the meat. Um, you know, people, people like switch it up. Wow. You, you know, the, Todd and Sheila, the, those those people, uh, I, I think I said it in the show a couple of times, my new best friends, because they, they just really cling on to enjoy the journey, enjoy life fully. They really are out there about not just them living their lives, but but encouraging others to live their life fully as well. Um, and, and, and yeah. the, you know, that's not, you know, all of the people that we've interviewed, uh, the Hanks, yeah, you know, an, another couple, I mean, just a young couple that, man, what a great outlook and the status crows. I, I mean, I could go on Janie from, from camper girl magazine. I, I, I could go on and on. It's like these, these people are just really, really incredible people. Right. And they're the kind of people we choose to hang out with. They're the kind of people that lift us up and inspire us. And that's what we'd encourage, you know, for all of you to do when you find community who's lifting you up, who's inspiring you. Uh, that's what it's all about in in my mind. Yeah, it it, it really is incredible. Uh Uh-oh, there's that horn again. It's time for to do something. What are we going to do right now? Oh, that's right. We are going to talk about the question of the week. And Patty, I think you have one from social media this week, right? I do. And I'm going to reiterate again. If you have any kind of question, anything related to travel, RV, anything, please reach out on Instagram or Facebook, RV Life Podcast. This question came in about a month or so ago, and I just thought it's perfect. And um, Ariel from Fairfield, Montana said, can I leave my RV at the campground in an emergency? And I think it's kind of funny that this was the question. But go ahead, Dan. I'll let you take that. No. 
<laughs> I guess the short well, answer on that is not always. in more cases than not, it, it's probably not. Um, but I will tell you to talk to the manager of the, okay. So I'm, I, you know, thousand trails. If you sit down and you talk to the manager, uh, the property manager at thousand trails, they are there to work with you. And we have had a couple of situations over the past few months because Patty's been going back and forth and, and that type of thing. And I, I got to tell you, um, and it, I'm sure it's not just a thousand trails thing, but if you sit down and talk with the manager of whatever park you're at, those people are here to help. They, they want to figure out a solution to the problem. And if, if, if you can't get a solution there, then, then I'm going to say lean on community around you. Talk to the people that are around you or that you know, and, and, and I think you'll probably be able to work through a solution. I agree with that answer. Always check with the people at the, the campground. Don't rely on a neighbor or somebody that says, yes, it's okay. So absolutely. And they usually are very helpful if they can't do, let you leave it there. They know storage in the area or storage at the campground. So yes. And, uh, that answer will be, it depends. Yeah, it, it really depends. But more times than not, the, the, the standard rule is you, you probably shouldn't leave your RV unattended. Um, if you go back and listen to our show with the status crows back in uh, December, uh, you know, they had some unique things where they have friends and campgrounds and that kind of stuff where they just had somebody look after it and that kind of thing. So you might want to go back and listen to that show because they had some great uh, input there. And then Patty, I think you're also going to put a link to that article from RV life where it really I talks am. about hacks of, of storing yeah. your RV. Um, so, you, you know, yeah. all of those things are, are just really, really incredible. Well, I, I gotta tell you, it is so beautiful. I think I'm going to go over and head by, sit by the pool for a little while. And, and I have had a really, really good time doing this show. I think this kind of information is really really important. So I'm in, we're going to call it Wildwood, Florida. Patty is in Manassas, Virginia. And, you know, we just want to say thank you so much for making the podcast uh, so successful over these last two months. I'm Dan Hunt with my incredible wife, Patty Hunt, saying have a great rest of today. And an even better day tomorrow. Tomorrow.